On this week's episode of Fishing 411, Mark and Jake Romanek travel to familiar waters. The western basin of Lake Erie, near the town of Port Clinton, may be the most productive walleye fishery in the world. One thing's for sure, if you visit Lake Erie in June and troll night crawler harnesses, you can bet the farm a limit catch of walleye is in your future. When the dust settles, Port Clinton and Lake Erie show exactly why they hold claim to being the walleye capital of the world. Coaxing, Dad. <laughs> oh, I'll let go of it. I'll let it back here and see if he bites it again. Oh, yeah, he's on it that time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun when you play. I remember when you were a kid, I told you not to play with your food. You're, you're still playing with your food. <laughs> I had to coax that one into biting. He didn't need it right away, but this is a cool thing about tattle flags is you can see those bites. And you can kind of play with the fish and get them to bite it. Today it's flat calm, so I think there's going to be a lot of that today where you see those fish bite, but they don't necessarily hit it very hard. And you can drop that board back, and basically what you're doing is you're just dropping that crawler harness right in their face again, and they can't resist that. They kind of come back and hit it. Can I ball on him yet? Yeah, it's a nice walleye. That. There you go, Jake. Nice. Well, that's a nice eater, Lake Erie walleye right there, Dad. Beautiful fish. Fish came on a tadpole harness and a crawler harness, and we got so much to talk about today on how to target these walleye suspended like they are right now. Um, but that's a good start. It's a beautiful fish to start the morning with. Uh, we're not keeping any fish today. This one's going back, uh, so you can come out here on Lake Erie and catch a pile of these eaters yourself. That one's pounding. Ooh, baby. It's a good feeling. That is a good feeling. Man, oh man. For those of you who are not familiar with a tadpole diver, it's something you're gonna wanna look into. It is a diver that's designed to take your baits down to depth, but it's not directional. It doesn't go out to the side like maybe like a dipsy diver or some of the other mini discs do. It's designed just to go to depth. And so we team them up with offshore boards in order to get them out to the side. And that's a really a deadly combination because we can use the tadpole to get our baits down to the depth where the fish are, and we can use the boards to pull our rigs out to the side so we can be covering more water. And uh, it's a one-two punch that's just absolutely deadly. Jake, a little help with that board. I'd love to pull the board Ooh, off for you there. This guy's hot. This guy is hot. There you go, Dad. All right. Oh, baby. Man, 
this is fun. I got this guy almost on the surface. I had a really short lead on the on the diver, so. Grab the net for you, Dad. He wants to be on your side of the boat, so we'll make him stay on your side of the boat. Thanks, fish, Dad. Oh, yeah. Nice little walleye. We're going to throw him back and talk a little bit more about the tadpole diver that we were explaining. It is a unique system. The little black thing right there is the tadpole diver. And it's not directional, but what it does do is it's resettable. And you can see right now there's a little snap on the end of my rod, and that's in the elbow of the tadpole. And what that does is it allows the tadpole to dive. But when we hook a fish, it slides into that position. Now it's not diving anymore, so you just have an inline weight, so you get to feel every head shake of that walleye, which is a really nice thing. Now what we've done to this is we've modified it a little bit. Back here, look at that little spinner. That's called an Atabuzz. That's a product made by Yakima Bait Company, and that's just to give a little extra attraction, a little extra vibration out there. And on the business end, we've got a five foot long leader down to a hammer time harness, also another Yakima product. So that combination, when we put it out to whatever lead length we want to get to the depth we're gonna catch fish in, 25 to 40 feet seems to be the hot zone today. Put it on a planer board, send it out to the side, and it's game on for catching walleyes. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. What do we got here? We got something interesting here, even though it's not interesting. It's interesting to me. I guess I'm a, a, a student of fisheries biology. I really enjoy this, the whole science of it, so I like to, to look at why fish do what fish do. Let me get this little guy unhooked here. Be gentle with him, he's gotta go back. That is a two-year-old walleye, and there's just a ton of these in the system. Next year, that fish will be big enough, I'll put him back, he'll be big enough to keep, he'll be that 15 inch. It takes about three years to get a walleye to 15 inches in Lake Erie, and the reason they grow so fast here, lots of forage. And so there's lots for these fish to eat, so they grow really quickly, and that's what makes it such a world-class fishery. You got one on here, Dad. This seems like a pretty good fish. You got more than one on your bottom of your rod, Cameron, too. <laughs> you can take them one at a time here. Been a handful today. Oh, yeah. Nice walleye. Nice. Beautiful. Nice job, Jake. Nice job. Good fish. It's a nice eater. Yeah, I wouldn't eat it, no problem. You know, we're having a lot today, and you'll see this on flat, calm days, is we'll have the actual tattle flag will go down, you'll see the board go back, and then it shoots forward. What's happening there is those fish are just kind of nipping at it. And so what, I, what I'll do is I'll actually free spool the board and just kind of let it drop back. And what you're doing is you're dropping that harness right in front of that fish's mouth, just giving it a little bit extra to come back and hit it again. You'll see that a lot on flat, calm days because there's not a lot of action. You're pulling that harness through the water and it's not really moving other than just moving forward. On a rough day, that harness is actually undulating back and forth in the water and you get a little bit of extra action. So you'll notice on flat, calm days, you gotta do a little bit of extra work with your boards to put walleyes in the boat. If you haven't been to Ohio in a few years, you might want to check the regulations. It used to be two lines per person here, and they just recently changed it. Now you can have three lines per man, which means that that's just that much faster you can catch your fish. It's a cool thing, and it also is similar to what Michigan is, border water. Michigan is three, Ohio is three now as well. When it comes to planer board rods, I like to use a seven and a half foot planer board rod, which I think is a little bit different. A lot of guys like to use that eight and a half foot rod, but I'll show you right now why I like to use a seven and a half foot rod. I can set the rod straight down just like this, and I can pull this planer board off by myself. I don't have to choke up on the rod. I don't have to worry about anyone stepping on the butt of the rod. And I can basically unhook that board and fight this fish all by myself. The nice thing for that is obviously dad's fishing with me today, but he's got fish on constantly and I have fish on constantly. And what I found is when you got two or three guys in the boat, when you choke up on that rod like that, you're just asking for someone to step on the butt of the rod and break it. So it's pretty hard to beat that seven and a half foot rod. This is a Great Lake series from Daiwa. Another really nice thing about this rod is the fact that it's telescoping. So I can actually bring this rod in and telescope it down. Now I've just brought this rod down to like six and a half foot, it makes it super easy to store inside my rod locker. So this Great Lakes trolling rod from Daiwa is pretty hard to beat, and that seven and a half foot range is pretty much ideal. Alrighty here, I'm thinking Jake, this one might be net worthy here. Good quality fish. That's a nice one. Another bottom bouncer fish, Dad. Yeah, it's been about even, hasn't it? I mean, we've caught a lot of fish on the spinning globe bottom walkers, and we've caught a lot of fish on tadpoles, so. Man, the guy's gotta love that. 
Let's get him unhooked, back in the water. Someone else can catch him tomorrow. You know, if you've watched Fishing 411 in the past, you've seen me sit right here in this seat and talk about how important electronics are. And when you're targeting walleyes that are suspended in the water column, it is so important to know where those fish are, and more importantly, being on schools of fish. And you can see my graph right now, this is like literally every walleye fisherman's dream. You can see how many fish are on that graph, and we've basically been trolling for two miles this morning, and the graphs never stop looking like that. Now, when you're in a group of fish like this, you really feel like you can do no wrong. But the one thing you have to remember is there's a ton of water out here and so you want to drive around until you find schools of walleye. Now this is a pretty exceptional school of walleye that we have on the screen right now but just knowing that they're there is important. Then what you can do is figure out where they are in the water column, get your lead lengths right and catch a lot of fish. But seeing a group of fish like that sure gives you the confidence that you're gonna have a great day of fishing. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. You know, at Fishing 411, we use live bait, cut bait, and frozen herring a lot for things like jigging for lake trout or trolling for trout and salmon. And while these baits do an excellent job of getting us lots of bites, the problem with them is they tend to be soft and they don't stay on the hook very long. So if you're looking to use these types of live bait products or cut bait products, you're also going to want to invest in something called Brine and Bite. It's a product made by Procure, and what it does is you can pour over top of these baits it toughens them up and it makes them so they stay on the hook much, much longer. And there's a variety of ways that you can do this. You can take live bait, spread it out on cookie sheets and freeze it, or you can buy frozen herring that's already ready to go and just lay those out in a tub and then you can pour these products on top of them. And as you can see, they come in different colors. So if you want to enhance the color of your bait, you could use a chartreuse, you can use a blue, or if you just want it natural, you could use just a natural shine color as well. So you can keep the baits looking natural or you can add a color enhancement if you think that that's gonna help you get a few more bites. The process only takes a few minutes. Once you pour the brine over top of the baits, you're gonna leave it on there for about 12 hours. If you want a really tough bait, you can leave even on 24 hours. Now yeah, look at this bottom bouncer just kind of peg like that. Just, <laughs> that's exactly what a walleye looks like. Oh, just kind of held there with his weight. Man, I have a lot of favorite ways of catching walleyes. If you watch Fishing 411, I probably say this is my favorite way. <laughs> They're all your favorite. Whatever ways. <laughs> walleye is biting, I'm happy. But bottom bouncers are so much fun. They're simple. It's an easy presentation to master. And you talk about effective. You can take this presentation anywhere in the country and catch walleyes. See, staying down nice and nice oh, fish, Dad. Beautiful fish. That's beautiful fish. You ready? Yes, lift I them up. Am. Nice fish. In the scoop. That's a little bit thicker, Dad. <laughs> That's a nice fish. Now, I know my dad talked about it, but one of the things that you're going to find when you come out here is you have fish that are suspended, and that's where tadpoles really shine when you're targeting those suspended fish, but there's also a lot of fish on the bottom. Some days those bottom fish just simply don't bite. Other days, the majority of your bites come on bottom, so it's really worth fishing a bottom bouncer. And what we like to do is fish bottom bouncers off the corners. We'll run planer boards out to the side. We can run a four or six rod spread with planer boards, but then you always have the corner of your boat open. It's a perfect spot to put a bottom bouncer down. So here today, we're fishing just my dad and I, we get to fish six lines. We can fish four board lines and two bottom bouncers off the corners. And it's catching beautiful walleyes like that. Whoa! <laughs> Who says walleyes don't don't fight? Catch them on light tackle and they'll give you a tough. There we go. Nice job there. Thanks, son. This is what I got my issue I have here, Dad. Is I got walleyes in one hand, walleyes in another hand. That's, that's a good issue, Dad. I love Lake Erie. <laughs> do a little quick comparison. I think yours is bigger. I got it. I got you beat. Especially <laughs> right. when I do that. I'll give you. I'll give, I'll give you that one. You got him beat. So let's get him back so someone else can catch him. So that last fish came on what's called a bottom bouncer and a spinner rig. And in the world of walleye fishing, a bottom bouncer and spinner is probably the most iconic way to catch a walleye. And what it is is basically a, a wire with a chunk of lead on it. And this one is called a spin and go bottom walker. This is a Yakima bait product. The only difference between this and a traditional bottom bouncer is the fact that it has a spin and go on there giving a little bit more attraction. But what you do is you drop this down to the bottom. And one of the things about a bottom bouncer is that it fishes in contact, in close contact to the bottom. And what I mean 
mean by that is you don't want the bottom bouncer dragging, you want it just ticking the bottom. What you want to remember is if you're in 20 feet of water, a two ounce bouncer is pretty much what you need. 30 feet of water, a three ounce bouncer. 40 feet of water, a four ounce bouncer. And that's kind of the rule of thumb with bottom bouncer fishing. And what I have here is about a 36 to 42 inch long leader, and that's what you want with a bottom bouncer. A little bit shorter leader, keeps that harness up off the bottom and not dragging on the bottom. Now the other really important thing about a bottom bouncer is the rod setup. It's probably the most important tool when it comes to bottom bouncer fishing. This is an eight foot, six inch medium action rod, but what this rod has is something that's called a parabolic bend. That's basically a really big word that means that when I grab a hold of this rod, the whole rod bends. It's got a real soft bend to it. And the reason that's important is you want that fish to be able to pick up on the harness and not feel the resistance of the rod. Basically, you want to be able to see the bite before the fish ever knows you're there. And then they're basically hanging themselves. What happens is you're trolling forward, that fish will bite that harness, the rod will load up, the fish cannot feel the resistance from the rod itself, but since you're trolling forward, it basically sets the hook itself. Then all we do is just pick the rod up and start fighting those fish. Now this is probably the easiest setup to catch a walleye out there and that's one of the reasons I love it so much. What I do is I put the harness in the water and I can see that everything's pulling true. I can see the, the bottom bouncers spinning with the spinning glow, the harness is spinning and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to free spool it all the way down until it hits the bottom. And again, this is a two ounce bottom bouncer in 24 feet of water. So you can see that the bouncer just hit the bottom. Now what I do is I put my thumb on the spool and I just let everything pull tight. We're pulling forward and what's happening is that bouncer is picking up off the bottom because we're trolling forward. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it out again until that bouncer stops a second time and that's it. Now I'm gonna click that rod over and put it in the rod holder. And if you can see from the rod tip going down, that line is going down to the water at about a 45 degree angle. That's the rule of bottom bouncer fishing. If you can keep that 45 degree angle, keep that bouncer within close contact to the bottom, you're gonna catch a lot of fish. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Dio Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. We're using two different types of rod holders today, but they're both made by Cisco Fishing Systems. Up here, we're gonna start by talking about what's called a rod holder tree. One, two, three tubes, so you can put three rods in here. We typically use these for inline boards. What I really like about it, it's got an indexing lever at the bottom of it so I can change its angle. So right now while I'm fishing, I've got it outboard like this. And at the end of the day, when I'm done fishing, I can actually lift it up and I can swivel it all the way to the back of the boat so my rod holders don't hit on the dock when I go in. That's a really nice feature. Now as we move to the back of the boat, the other style of rod holder we're using here, I call it a cradle holder here. And the beauty of this is that when I've got a fish on, I can just grab the rod and lift it straight up. It's really smooth and easy to function, and it allows me to control my rod tip wherever I want. I can put it down by the water, I can lift it a little bit up higher if I want, but cradle rod holders are ideal for things like bottom bouncers. We also use them a lot for doing things like diving planers as well. So saddle holders at the back of the boat, the tube style tree holders up at the front of the boat, that's getting it done today for us. I got one on my board line, Dad. I would say my outside board or inside board, but I haven't been able to keep both boards in the water all morning. So this was the only line that I had out on this side, and of course, <laughs> it goes back. <laughs> Looking for a landing net, kid? Yeah, this one's banging down really nice, Dad. Oh yeah, some oh, nice man. fish. You got some nice quality fish coming on your side of the boat. I'm gonna have to turn the boat sideways or something here so I can catch some, some 20 inches. That's a nice fish. That's a beautiful. Oh, 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 oh that <laughs> one's hefty. That one's got some nice weight to it. Good job, Dick. That is a really good fish sandwich right there. If we were keeping fish today, that one's an absolute perfect eater. I got some shoulders on them. So hey dad, this one would be more in that probably a five-year-old fish. That's what I'm guessing, right? In that five-year-old category, four or five years, four old. five years old. They grow so fast here in Lake Erie, you know, they take three years to, to reach 15 inches, and then they just keep growing because there's so much food here. But that's a good fish right there. That's a nice average walleye. The offshore tackle tadpole diver comes in four different sizes. The largest is called the Magnum. Then they have a number three, and they have a number two, and they have a number one. The one that we were using today is the number one, the smallest size. And it's gonna get you down in that neighborhood of around 20 feet. If you're interested in the dive profiles on these, you can look them up on the Precision Trolling Data app. It'll tell you exactly how much line you have to let out to get them to whatever depth you need to get them to. But for shallow diving stuff, the number one is very popular. Number two, of course, goes a little deeper. Number three, a little deeper. And if you really gotta get down there, Go to the Magnum. 
When you're trolling slow, tattle flag, something that goes on your offshore board here, is probably one of the more important tools that you're going to have because when you're trolling slow, you're going to catch big fish and you're going to catch small fish. And being able to see those small fish bite allow you to get that small fish off and get back in the water targeting bigger fish. What a tattle flag is, is basically an articulating flag. You can see here on the planer board, this flag will go down. And one of the nice new things for offshore this year is we upgraded the tattle flag wire. If you have a tattle flag on your board right now, you can buy this wire and it's a heavier duty wire that just simply doesn't bend, which is a really nice feature. Uh, but basically the way a tattle flag works is you can see I can clip the board on here, and I'll clip it on the line, and what I do is I leave a little bit of slack between the red release and the orange release, and that just allows enough room for that flag to work. Now what happens is this board is out to the side. If I get a little fish that bites, I can see that flag go down. And a lot of times today, we've seen the flag go down and then pop right back up. And I've been able to actually coax that fish into biting. You simply would have never caught that fish if it wasn't for the tattle flag. So the tattle flag is something that allows even the most experienced anglers to see those small fish, get them off, and then get back in the water targeting bigger fish. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish, Dad. We'll come to Bob over here. There we go. Nice fish. Yeah, that one's got some heft to it. <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> hey, I'm Mark Romanak, and you've been watching Fishing 401. If you want to have a great time walleye fishing, get yourself down to the Ohio waters of Lake Erie, catch yourself a bunch of these, and be sure to take your spinners with you because it's going to make a big difference. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorance Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. Always looking for, I'm picking out the big night crawler because I'm confident it's going to get me more bites and it's going to get me a higher quality fish. So the question becomes, what do you do with the little night crawlers? It's easy. You put them in Jake's crawler box and you don't ever have to worry about it, okay?